Hey, what's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Welcome back to the Print Life. Roll the intro. Today I'm gonna do a Q&A using my phone and I'm gonna just address some of the questions in the YouTube comments, the Facebook group, just stuff that I don't often get to answer. Uh, so let's go to the office and we'll tackle that thing. All right, you guys ready to do this? Are we in focus? Probably not. Are we ever? Here's an interesting question from Kevin Gunn and he, he has a picture of WD-40 silicone spray. And he asks, is this the same silicone spray used by Cam or others for wet on wet printing? It is not. I have industry specific stuff, but I would not hesitate to try that. I would think would probably happen is it would be too thick. Like because it, with WD-40, they are specifically designed to lubricate things. So it might just lay too much of whatever's in it on the, on the ink and shit like that. So it might be difficult, but I wouldn't hesitate to give it a try on some. I never even thought about it. It's from Jean LaRose. Sales tax question, tax, sales tax question. If the customer is supplying the shirts, do I still collect sales tax? The customer is in the same state as I am, thank you. Yeah, you still collect sales tax on the thing unless they give you tax, unless they show tax exemption. A lot of them will have the, I'm gonna screw this up, man. I think it's the W-9 form and you just have them put your inf their information in there. Uh, and then you hang on to it, and then you can show that they're tax exempt. Good question. Thank you uh, very much for asking that, uh, Gene. A uh, Gene? A uh, Gene? Almost like, almost sounded like I called you a Gene. Thank you for the question, Gene. How many of you are standing on fatigue mats while you print? Ding, 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 ding. When I first started printing, I printed barefoot, trying to strengthen my feet, but I did it so much and I was on my feet so much at the time that I actually developed plantar fasciitis. Wearing, going barefoot is important and having zero drop shoes at least 50% of the time is also important just to promote good foot health. But concrete's a problem. So if you are wearing like zero shot drop shoes or maybe you just wear Converse All-Stars or, or like Vans Chuckas, anything that doesn't have a lot of padding, fatigue mats will help tremendously. And also, if you're a kind of a barefooter, kind of like I am a lot of the times, I hate it when I start talking and I do this. I just did that. Very weird. If you go barefoot a lot or if you wear like super flat stuff to promote foot health, then fatigue mats will help you when, when you're on your feet for long periods of time. So definitely pick some up. Good question. I love this shit. This is good stuff, man. Uh, and that was from Jeremiah Aki. Mm. Eric Gidley, how many of you manual printers have a contracted auto printer for really, really large orders? Or is it like against the manual print code to contract out to autos? There is, t uh, I looked into it multiple times and I could just never find the right pricing that, that made it worth my effort. Uh, and I did set up some things in my software to where I could just create accounts for different contractors and then they could log in, I could assign jobs to them and all this stuff. I did a lot of really cool stuff, but at the end of the day, I could, I could not find the printers that were printing low enough to make it worthwhile. It was almost easier just to turn the damn job down than to take my little, very little percentage on it. I'm just... I'm gonna use this word again, I don't know if this is the right word, perpetuating manual printing until you are truly, truly, truly ready to, uh, to move to an automatic or to start putting out large amounts of cash to buy large equipment. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna have a, I'm having a guest on the live Wednesday show on the 11th. Uh, it's gonna be my first guest and it's gonna be none other than Marshall Atkinson, so make sure you guys tune in. Uh, yeah, so tune in Wednesday the 11th, me and Marshall, live thing. If you have any questions for him in regard to, in regards to when is it time, what da 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 da, leave the questions in the comments of this video and I'll ask him. So be there or be square. Be there or you suck. And also remind everybody to be there because I want this to be the biggest turnout yet. Oh, this is an interesting one. This is something from da Danny uh, and he was just saying how I think he's aware that a lot of people make their own custom washout boots and he was just wondering if everybody could get together and post their custom jobs. And that is a very good post. I think it would really help other people that are trying to figure out the best way for them to go about getting their first washout booth together. So let's do that. Post it in the Print Life Facebook group uh, and uh, that would be awesome. Okay, I, I don't think that I understand this question but I pre-read it and I'm still not sure. This is from uh, Patrick Price. 
he has a basic question about using white ink. Here's the question. Has anyone had it shift and transfer to a shirt? Probably a newbie error. Any tips would help. I seem to get a clean run with water-based. Thank you. Maybe you're talking about ghosting where you do the print and then like a lot of the times what will happen is uh, if, you, if you do your first pass, uh, and you didn't get good penetration and you do another pull and if you have loose loose screen mesh or if you have too thick of ink or if you're inexperienced at pulling squeegees uh, on the second pass the first layer of ink will actually or, or the screen is in general will just kind of do this is your first pass you lift the screen you put it back down you lay it down but what actually happened is the, the mesh kind of like shifted off like this so when you do that second pass it almost looks like there's a ghost or a a gray shadow or something uh check your tensions make sure your palettes and all this shit ain't moving and then uh you just got to work on your technique i mean you just try to do your two pulls i remember experiencing that shit back in the day uh, on the on like lower quality presses and it was a probably a number of things probably wasn't the screen mesh to be honest with you too thick of ink um too hard of squeegee pressure or the pallets are moving, something of that nature. So check all that shit out. Also, this is a culprit that gets people and they, they don't realize it is if the shirts aren't tacked down well enough, they might lift and then move on you. So just make sure all those things are in order and you should be fine. This is more of a uh, statement request than an actual question, but Jeremiah Aki, again, I don't know. Last names, dude. Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, hey Cam, how about a video on making videos? You have talent, my friend. It's so easy. <clears throat> the, making videos is just work. Uh, but yeah, maybe I can do that. I'll do that at some point in the near future. Okay, so this is the thing. Uh, Junebug is kind of referencing what, what appears to be liquid tape. And uh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm trying to... GG. Sorry about that. My dog was having a goddamn spaz attack. Okay, so Junebug is mentioning this liquid tape stuff. And... She's looking at this thing that's $289 for 16 ounces, free shipping, no strong chemicals, just to remove, just a pressure washer. So what June is looking at is the other alternative to taping. So she, she uses a lot of tape and she wants to stop using tape, so she's looking for a chemical alternative. Now what I use is liquid tape, but it's permanent. And I think in your mind you're thinking, okay, well I would rather just maybe use a spatula, you know, after I wash my screen out or expose my, whatever you call it. Uh, and as it's drying, I want to put a liquid tape thing around the edge and then uh, just use that and then wash that when I'm done. Problem with that is it's also, not only are you finding a new thing to waste, so now you're switching from wasting tape to wasting another chemical and you're still flushing it down the drain, so you're actually being even harder on the environment. Liquid tape, you apply it once and it takes time, but after that you never apply it again. And I will tell you, it has cut our screen setup time. And granted, taping doesn't take a long time, but there's a whole other process. You're bringing the roll out. Everything takes like twice as long as you think it does. Like in your mind, it's like, oh, one, two, three, four. Oh, that only takes 40 seconds. It doesn't. You're pulling the thing over. You're having to, adjust, you're having to put your screens up on a different table so that you can tape them. It's just time consuming. And then you're also tearing the tape off at the end, throwing it back in the landfill. Uh, I believe there's, that was a long explanation to the, the point. If you're going to go the, the tape route, just stick with your traditional tape. It's easier and, it, you know, that other chemical is just going to get messy and fussy. I wouldn't screw with it. If you're trying to be more efficient and produce less waste in your shop, then that permanent liquid tape on your screen is the best solution. And in my opinion, it's the most efficient solution. Jeff Osborne asks, I'm a dollar more expensive than one of the biggest shops in my city. I don't see how they make the money they do. Well, first and foremost, a lot of them don't, bro. Don't assume that they're making money. I think that that's the most important thing that every small and big shop needs to understand is that the grass is not greener. If they're cutting their prices down because they just need to feed their shops, they're nowhere near the profit margins that you are. Whereas you as a small shop might have 50% mar margins, right? Like at the end of the year after expenses, they could be at 10%, 5% margins. I mean, it, they are making money because of the sheer volume. Don't compare what you're doing to them. Price your jobs to make money for yourself. Get your expenses in order. Uh, know all of your overhead costs, including paying yourself. Figure that shit out and then charge accordingly. 
to not only pay all that stuff, but to make a profit at the end of the year, so that you or at the end of the quarter, so that you can reinvest it in the company. Read profit first. Uh, read the book. Buy the book. Read the book. Understand the book. Because the first thing it did to me was put me on game that most big businesses are in just shitty financial straits as you are. They just got better credit. This is an interesting problem, and, and I remember suffering with this when I was first started. Uh, this is from Russell Sprague. Russell, thank you for the question, and also thank you for posting this problem. This is actually a really simple fix that just uh, it doesn't hit a lot of people until you've been doing it for a while, and then you just stumble onto it by accident. So what's happening is his black has crisp edges on the garment, but when he prints them over a white underbase, so the black is bleeding on, printing on top of the white, uh, they're bleeding enough to make it look crappy. So what's happening is the, the black almost looks like he printed it and then someone took a piece of paper and went and it makes the black go fart off into the edges. It looks bad. Uh, the, set, the fix is actually very, very simple. So what he's doing right now is he, I'm going to give you his, he's going, my print is white, flash, prints white again, flashes, and then black, print, and then he cures. Pretty straightforward. That's what we all do. But here's where the problem is. He's using a 160 mesh for both colors. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you can stick with that 160 for the white uh, for sure, but you need to up the mesh count on that black. Black, especially black and yellow, they're like two of the most uh, runny. I don't, I don't know the consistency, but they have like the fuck, they're the most flowy. They have the least amount of body, especially black. There's like no body to it. So when you print that through a low mesh count like a 160, it just deposits so much ink that that stuff, it has to go somewhere. Up your mesh count, start. I would say maybe a 230 or a 280, and that will fix most of the problems you're having. And then try to get it in one, maybe two pulls if you have to, but you should be able to get it in one. You just need to reduce the ink deposit going over that white. That'll fix you up. Really, your fix is just up in the mesh count. Start at a 230 or a 280 and you won't this this problem will be a thing of the past good question that's good stuff there and uh, you know there's lots of questions here I could probably just sit here and scroll through this forever but I feel like that was a pretty good amount of questions that I answered should give you guys about five ten minutes of footage uh, again thank you for tuning in before I go remember we got Marshall in here live Wednesday at 11 so if you have any questions to him in regards I really want to dive into pricing, shop organization, and when it's time to automate. Those are going to be my main questions. If you have anything else you would like me to elaborate on, leave those questions in the comments of this video. I'll write them down and I'll put them on my list of questions to ask him uh, before we open it up to the live chat, wherein you guys will ask the questions, I'll read them to him, and he'll fire off his best answer. So tune in, man. I'm excited to have my first guest in the office. Uh, and what better way to start than with the guy that did my first interviews? And uh, everybody, make sure to tune in Wednesday the 11th at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to enjoy the show. I'm excited. It's going to be weird. I got to remember to not interrupt the motherfucker. Don't interrupt. <laughs>